Hello, and welcome once again to our weekly Sunday Mass here at Gonzaga. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Father Stephen Hess, and I am a Jesuit here at Gonzaga. And we gather once again as a community that's separated but united today by the Mass that we will celebrate with, with each other. Our presider this Sunday is Father Peter Byrne. Um, Peter is a Jesuit in, from our Jesuit community here at Gonzaga, and he also serves as the pastor of our parish in DeSmet, Idaho. And today, as we come together and celebrate this Mass, we hear the story of Jesus and his disciples in the upper room, where Jesus brought them a sense of peace. And let us pray that as we celebrate and pray with each other today, that we will feel that peace and serenity of the risen Christ, just like the disciples did. Well, good morning and welcome here to uh, the Della Strada Chapel, the Jesuit Communities Chapel here on the campus of Gonzaga University as we celebrate the Eucharist. My name is Peter, Father Peter Byrne. I'm a Jesuit, and my ministry is really down with the Coeur d'Alene native people at DeSmet, Idaho, about 60 miles from here in Spokane. And as many of you probably know, the Jesuits came to the Northwest at the invitation of native people in Montana. And that's why we came here to Gonzaga, to really originally set up a school for the native people of the Spokane area. So I'm, I'm really glad to celebrate with you, and I know that some of the people on the reservation will also be able to, to pray along with us. So we're in the Easter season, but nevertheless, we always mark ourselves with that cross, which is the symbol of our freedom and God's love for us and our deepest hope. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and my sisters, may the joy, the hope, and the peace of the risen Jesus who is here in our midst always be with you. And with your spirit. We have wonderful readings from the Bible today, great scriptures. In two of them, we see different aspects of the Christian community. When we read the Acts of the Apostles, we see an ideal community. Everybody's getting along. They're just wonderful. But the community in John's Gospel on Easter night are all huddled in fear. And they're in great need of healing and forgiveness. And that's probably where we all live our lives. Sometimes our community living, our family life, is just wonderful. And we're grateful. Other times, we snap at each other. We're judging each other. And we have to ask forgiveness. So maybe we can just take a moment of quiet, both with gratitude in our hearts, but also the awareness that we both need to forgive and to receive the forgiveness of others. So let's just bow our heads for a moment of quiet as we do that. Lord Jesus, you come into our midst as you did to that community on Easter night. And you bring healing and forgiveness and reconciliation. And so we too cry out to you in prayer, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may our loving God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and then lead us together to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And in the Easter season, we continue glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now let us pray that the Spirit will prepare our hearts to hear the good news of the Scriptures. Gracious God of everlasting mercy, who in the very anniversary of the Easter feast, we pray that you will kindle our faith and increase the grace you have first given to us in baptism, that we may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood we have been redeemed. And we pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. All came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultations and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Alleluia. Alleluia. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord held me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. The stone with the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. <clears throat> Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in, a final, in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while 
you may have to suffer through your various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor. At the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Shalom, peace be with you. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Shalom, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. The following week, the disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were still locked, and he stood in their midst and said, Shalom, peace be with you. And then Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. And so Thomas answered and said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus said to him, Thomas, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a line from an American poet often quoted in many, many churches. Her name is Mary Oliver. This is the line. Are you breathing just a little and calling that life? Are you breathing just a little and calling that life? Well, we all know that this coronavirus is so deadly and lethal, especially when it gets into the lungs because then it causes the lungs to fill up with fluids and people are barely able to breathe. They're gasping for air. They feel like they're drowning in those fluids in the lungs, unable to get oxygen to other parts of the body. And that is how so many die. And that's why it's so deadly for older people and for those with those pre-existing conditions. Are you breathing just a little? And when we can't breathe on the physical level, we die. We really die. 
So without diminishing or trivializing the terrible cruelty of this disease and the suffering that it's inflicted on so many people all throughout the world and whose pain we're going to feel for years to come, I'd like to take that image, are you breathing just a little, and transfer it over to another part of our life as human beings. So again, are we breathing just a little bit and calling that life? On Easter night, that reading from John's Gospel that we just heard, the frightened followers of Jesus are huddled in an upper room, barely breathing. They're gasping for life, for fear has just sucked all the life and hope out of them, and they're staying in place, not because they want to be with each other and they're playing games or videos. They're there because they're frightened. They're filled with their cowardice and this terrible guilt that they betrayed their, <clears throat> their master. They ran away. They cut and ran. They're paralyzed. And in a way, they're filling up with that type of guilt that can take all the life out of every one of us. This is not the ideal community that we read in Acts, where they all came together after Pentecost, and they shared everything in common, and they read the scriptures, and they prayed together. That's not happening in the upper room that night. They're drowning, and they're drowning in guilt and self-hatred. They're gasping for life, and then the risen Jesus comes into their midst, comes through locked doors, and he says that wonderful Hebrew word that it's so hard to capture in English, shalom, peace, shalom. And now this community is going to be threatened not by the contagion of fear, but by resurrection. They're going to be threatened now by almost too much life more than they can handle. For the risen Jesus, he does something that only as the risen Christ of God could do. He breathes on them and into them the very spirit of the creator, of God, which is now his spirit, the spirit that at the beginning of creation God breathed into our primordial ancestors and gave them life. And so he's going to breathe that into this group. And when that breath comes in, then there's life, there's resurrection, there's a new creation for them. And it makes all the difference in the world. It makes all the difference in the world. But the big thing is that it's happening right now to you and to me and to all of us who open up our capacity to receive that breath of life. So I have to ask all of us and myself first, am I breathing just a little bit, kind of saying, well, I've done enough, I can get along, I've got enough of God going on in my life, or are we just breathing a little bit and calling that real life? You know, I know that we're breathing a lot of junk <laughs> from the air. We're breathing a lot of polluted and foul air, and if nothing else, I gather all over the world, the air has got a little cleaner. There's not as much pollution. But we have been breathing in for years and years and decades and decades the fumes of a very self-centered, bigoted, narcissistic culture that this virus has kind of ripped open and shown that we are more ill in our souls than any virus could ever do to get into our lungs. And not just personally, but as a culture and as a people. This virus is maybe a gift in the most terrible way, in that it might show us where we really need a respiratory therapist, where we need the risen Jesus to come and say, Breathe on us. We're dying. We're gasping for real life. 
Now Thomas, of course, he wasn't there the night when Jesus breathed on the community, so he comes and he demands, he wants evidence. Good scientist, you know. I want to see the wounds. I want to put my hand in his side. I won't believe until I can put my hands in the wounds of Jesus. And I'd like to suggest that Thomas has a point. And I think this is it. Unless all of us, to a degree, can touch the real wounds now of the risen Jesus living in all of us, unless we can touch the heart of Jesus that's just been ripped open by pain and suffering, then it's very hard to really believe in him. And that's why we all have to somehow touch the wound of Jesus. We have to put our hand into his side as he suffers in others. I think we all struggle with faith. But my own conviction is that it's never going to be deepened just by theory and by another class in theology or by another lecture or even by more scripture or more liturgy, all of which are important. Finally, we grow in deep faith in Jesus and we come to know him when we actually touch the body of Christ in our brothers and sisters. We've all read wonderful things that are happening uh, in this virus of the decency and generosity and courage of so many people. This one struck me deeply. An emergency room doctor who prepares other doctors told them when they're in those emergency rooms and it's just chaos and the wounded Christ is all over the place, he said this to his teams, take a few moments if you can talk about patients' families, their lives, their dreams, ask if there is a loved one for whom you could call. And lastly, two final things. Hold your patient's hand for a minute as they near death or actually pass. And ask your entire team to stop for five or ten seconds, bow your heads, state the patient's name, and ask for silence. I would like to hope and think that the actual faith of a team like that will grow deeper, no matter how skeptical they might have been before, that they're in the midst of the Holy One, the sacred, the profound presence of the risen, crucified Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, and I start with myself, go find the wounded Jesus. Touch him and, and touch your own wounds. You know, the part that's not, that's all broken and bruised, it's holy. It's the sacred part of us. And touch the beautiful earth. We now realize how broken and bruised and wounded our world that God said, here, care for it. And Pope Francis says, we've, we've wounded this world. And to touch it again, now that spring is coming, and to admire and appreciate it. And then, over and over again, let the risen Jesus breathe into us so we can breathe that spirit out to other people. That's, I think, our call. That's our hope. That's what our community is really built on, a group of people who have been touched by the Lord, who's breathed his spirit into them, and now together we use all the creativity, all the imagination, all the panache, everything that's in us to breathe life back out to people. And it's a world that's in need of hope and life and joy, and we've been given at least a good part of it. So maybe we can just take a moment of quiet, wherever you are, whoever you are, and the Jesus can come through locked doors, he can come into your apartment, he can come into your home, your living room, wherever you're watching this, and he is not limited in space or time, he is the very risen one, and he is with you. 
So God bless you as we continue with the Eucharist. Let's just bow our heads for a moment before we pray the creed. The oldest creed in that early community was the Apostles' Creed. The Nicene Creed came many centuries later, and one of the key lines of the Apostles' Creed is they believed in the resurrection of the body. So our bodies are crucial. The wounds that we have are sacred. They're holy. So I'm going to invite us maybe wherever you are just to stand. This is what we stand for. We believe this. And uh, often people say, I can't remember the words. Well, when we do it together, we have a little better chance, OK? I sometimes can't remember alone, but let's do our best. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead and ascended to the Father, and from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It is the Spirit who's been breathed into us who teaches us how to pray and what to pray for and how to respond to the gospel. So we will hear some prayers offered now, and I ask you, wherever you are, to make your petitions known to God as well. So I think we got those going. For the whole community of our church spread throughout the world, may our shared experience of the COVID-19 crisis unite us and bring peace that will erode divisions that separate us from loving each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in the Southeast experiencing the effects of tornadoes, may God grant them safety and may they feel comfort through our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those experiencing doubt, fear, and loneliness, may they feel the serenity of the risen Christ in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have died, especially Father Peter Ely, who served for many years at Gonzaga, may they watch over us and give us courage during this time of stress and uncertainty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us turn to Mary, the mother of Jesus, who stood at his side all throughout his life and who received, in St. Ignatius's words, the first visit of the risen Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness and kindness that we have received this bread and wine. They are the work of human hands, the product of the earth that you have given us. They will become for us the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that our gifts of bread and wine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Loving God, everything we have is gift from you, the very breath of life, the gift of the Spirit, the power of the risen Jesus in our midst. So we ask you to take and receive the gifts we bring to you and give us the power and the courage to go forth from this Eucharist to bring your healing and your hope to others. And we pray this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us all give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty, but our deepest joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise, gracious and loving God. And we are grateful for the risen Jesus, for he is the true lamb that takes away the sins of the world. By dying, Jesus has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. So now we join our voices with the angels, the saints, all the holy ones who've gone ahead of us, so that with one voice we may acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O oh Lord our God, you are holy indeed. You are the source and fountain of all that is sacred, all that is holy. Let your Holy Spirit now come upon our gifts of bread and wine to make them holy, so that they will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed, on that night before he died, he called his friends together for a final meal. And during the meal, he took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to them all saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when that supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his followers, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you gather again in my name, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And we offer to you, loving God, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. And we thank you for gathering us together here in your presence and elsewhere so that we may share in the Eucharist that Jesus has given to us. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ Jesus and the gift of his Holy Spirit, 
we may be gathered into one by that spirit. Lord God, remember your church spread throughout the whole world and gathered together in many places. Help us to come to the fullness of faith, hope, and love with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the men and women you call to lead and to serve your people. Remember especially all who have died, all our loved ones and relatives and friends, all who have died in this terrible disease. Welcome them all into the light of your face and have mercy on us too, so that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our mother Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, Ignatius of Loyola, and Aloysius of Gonzaga, we too may receive from you that final gift of eternal life, and so praise and glorify you through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So much of our life as followers of Jesus depends on him breathing that spirit into us because it is the spirit that teaches us how to pray, not just words, but out of the depths of our hearts. So let us remember the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles on Easter night and to us gathered in many places, I leave you peace, my own peace I give to you. So look not on our sins, look rather on our faith and trust in your love and promises and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. And my brothers and my sisters, may the peace of the risen Jesus always be with you. And with your spirit. At least let's look at one another and offer that hope and gift of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and my sisters, behold the Lamb of God the presence of the risen Jesus, and happy are we invited again to share together in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed, the body and the blood of Christ. I am going to invite those who have gathered here in this chapel of Maria della Strada 
if they would like, after they've received the blessed bread, to come and to just dip the host, if they wish, into the consecrated wine as well. Let us pray in thanksgiving. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, grant that our reception of this Easter sacrament may have a continuing effect on our minds and hearts, and with the Spirit breathed into us by the risen Jesus, we may go forth now to love and serve you and our brothers and sisters we pray this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may our God continue to strengthen and to bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended, but in some ways it is just beginning, so let us go forth to love and to serve our God and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. And thank you very much. Thank you all. It's been wonderful to pray with you. I hope God's blessing will come upon us all. So we gather finally again, like that early community, with joy and hope and delighted to see each other and telling how we've experienced the risen Jesus while we've been apart. Amen.